Welcome to Brewers Brothers. I'm James. I'm Sean. And I'm Bert. This week, Bert got a chance to head out to London's newest brewery, Anderson's. Yeah, and while we were down there, we actually got to uh, play some Jenga as well as check out, uh, you know, some of their new beers. But for now, let's check out Bert at Anderson's. Sounds good. So I'm here with Gavin Anderson at Anderson's Craft Ales in London, Ontario, and uh, I'm speaking with Gavin himself. Uh, thank you very much for spending some time with us today. Certainly yeah. appreciate it. Oh, thanks for coming. Yeah, I know uh, when you're starting a new brewery, you're extremely busy, of course. <laughs> it looks great in here, so you guys have done a really good job with that, and uh, getting to try out the beers have been also phenomenal. Especially for first offerings, you know, yeah. sometimes breweries, when they first open up, their first few aren't exactly how they wanted it, right? But uh, you guys have been doing a great job, so thank you so much. Um, I'm curious, why is it that you chose London? You could start a brewery really anywhere um, in Canada, I'm assuming, and you just chose to come here. Yeah, that's true. Well, it, uh, um, I mean, as you probably know, it's, uh, we've got a family-owned and family-operated brewery. Mm -hmm. So we've also got, I mean, I'm from outside Guelph, but we've got a fair amount of family that lives in London, too. I've right. got some uh, uh, grandparents and uh, aunts, uncles, couple cousins. So we, uh, yeah, I wanted to move back somewhere closer to my family mm -hmm. and when we were looking at potential locations it was I mean London definitely seems like a like a a town that that needs more craft breweries that wants more craft breweries mm -hmm. for sure and there's always room for more right yeah um, going back even five years ago we didn't really have any here so, uh, so this is uh, you know as a craft beer fan myself this is great um, tell us a little bit about uh, a couple of your beers I know I'm drinking the amber right now I really like this like what type of malts are in here uh, so we use, I think that one has a blend of uh, five or six different malts. Mm -hmm. So a couple different caramel crystal malts to give it that kind of toffee caramel or like a, a really dark uh, uh, dark caramel kind of flavor. Mm -hmm. A bit of a couple fruity notes in there too. And a, a strong bready malty aftertaste as well. Right. And so I understand uh, um, with the IPA, like you, you've been a home brewer for quite some time yeah uh, ten, about 10 years excellent and this is kind of your baby that you've been sort of perfecting over time yeah so I it's um, well most of these recipes I've I've started them years and years ago and right. I've just been kind of tweaking them over time um, but yeah with IPA it's been the same basic recipe but just kind of playing with different combinations of hops until I found one that, that kind of clicks and that's uh, that's what we have here perfect so tell me about what type of hops you actually have in here Sure, there's, uh, there's five different varieties that we use. Uh, a couple are the old uh, like classic standbys, like Centennial, Cascade, there's mm -hmm. some Columbus in there. And then there's two newish uh, varieties that uh, I think we'll keep secret for now. Fair enough. Well, it's, I, I don't know what, what, what's in there, but it tastes phenomenal, so keep it up. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and then you have two other beers right now. Are all four of these beers like staple beers for you guys, and then you'll have seasonals over top? or? You're not sure yet. Yeah, I think that's kind of the plan. At least, uh, at least we'll keep these four for, I mean, six months, or, or we'll see how it goes from there. But we want to have something that if people like it, then they know it's here and they know they can get it. And so on top of that, we'd also like to have two uh, rotating ones. Mm -hmm. So we're planning on doing one that rotates every three months with the seasons. Right. And our last tap, we'd like to do. Uh, just as as uh, as often as we can make them, so every two three weeks, so we're hoping awesome. to have something. We're hoping to have the fifth tap ready in a couple weeks, and the sixth one, yeah, also in a couple weeks. And I'm sure Come by the soon. time this airs, a couple months from now, probably they'll it be should, they'll be all be there running, running, unless you keep making beer this good and they sell out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> hopefully not. Which is a good problem yeah. to have, right? Yeah. So I gotta ask, um, what is it that you have against loggers? Against loggers? Yeah. I don't have anything against I'm loggers. Just but <laughs> I know you call it craft ales, yeah. so I just had to ask. Do you guys have plans to make other styles other than nails as well? I think so, okay. yeah, in, in the future. Is this more the name, right? Yeah, and for me, it, I'm, I mean, I'm mostly, mostly an ale guy, so most of what we're going to do is ales. Uh, for right. seasonals, we'll probably do a lager here and there, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I like lager as much as the next guy. The, the last brewery I was working at, uh, I won a, a bronze at the Canadian Brewing Awards for the Pilsner we made. Mm -hmm. so. 
So you definitely have experience yeah, doing I things. Yeah, I can do lagers. You can I like do lagers, it. Okay, okay. Ales are ales are usually more flavorful and right. uh, more more interesting. Not and always. certainly the style of, of, of you know, not, probably 90% of craft beer sales are a style of ale. Yeah. So yeah, I think so. That makes sense. And what about uh, you know coming up in the future? Can you tell me about maybe? A uh, big beer that you're hoping to do, like I don't know if you're going to do a double IPA at some point, or you might do some type of imperial stout, or yeah, something like that. At some point, um, uh, we haven't planned too far ahead for now, so we're working on our like uh, every three month seasonals. Right. But definitely for the the smaller batch rotating ones, mm -hmm. we'll that's the that's a good time to experiment because right. it's a small batch. So that's that's probably when we'll get into our double, triple. Whatever, whatever we want to throw in there. Yeah. yeah, and you guys have plans for. I know there's quite a bit of space here. You guys have plans to do barrel aging as well, eventually, or eventually. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, for now. We're just trying to like stabilize mm -hmm. and be able to to keep up and and figure out what we're going to need going forward. And then, uh, yeah, after that, we'll. It's something that that we'll we'll dabble in. I mm -hmm. think. And the one thing I wanted to ask you about that I don't see a lot of, and from what I understand, it's starting to happen at West a little. Um, you guys are using the 355 milliliter cans as opposed to the the tall boys, the 500 milliliters. Yeah. Um, what's the main reasoning behind that? Uh, for me, it's it's, and a lot of people I've spoken with as well. It's uh, it's uh, it's a more I guess sessionable size. Or right. If you're hanging out with a couple people, it's bring a six pack, crack a couple open. Um, I mean, it's not a big deal for most people, but I've spoken with some people that. They don't want to like commit to a 473 of everything. It's it's not that much more, but it's I mean, you can have two or three of those, or you can have like six six right. more cans. So. Yeah, no, I definitely uh, I think that that's the way it's going to go. Yeah, um, and especially it's a, more, uh, it's a more portable format. Um, it's great for like once you've tried everything and you've decided that you like our beer the best, which right. is the, the obvious conclusion. <laughs> once that's yeah obviously happened, <laughs> <laughs> then you I mean it's easy to just grab a six pack and take it home for the weekend or off to the cottage or whatever. Great. Well, this uh, the tap room looks really nice. I really like it. Nice. Um, looks excellent here. You guys done a great job to start up, and from what I understand, uh, we're even going to go check out the brewery soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds great. So, yeah, especially um, the way we've got it set up here. We've got a seating area where you. You can see the whole production area mm -hmm. as well, um, or we do tours, so we'll give you a tour later. Yeah, the games room upstairs is great. You got the giant Jenga, and you can see out over the the whole production floor and kind of you know try the beer, see what's going on. Right. Yeah, that's what we had in mind. Is we want people to be able to see where it's made. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's uh, I mean it's about the beer, but it's also about the the experience. We want people to come here and have a beer, see the beer being made, and just have a good time. Awesome. So maybe you can just tell people who haven't had a chance to come to Anderson's yet, like what part of London you're in. Okay, yeah, we're in uh, Old East Village. So we're just off of, we're on Elias Street. Right. 1030 Elias Street. We're just off Quebec in between Dundas and Oxford. Okay. Great. So it's, and for um, those who have been to Junction Climbing Center, you're of course right beside it as well. Exactly. Yep. Perfect. Same building. Awesome. Well, uh, let's go take a look at this awesome games room you were telling me about. Sounds good. Let's All go. Right. So I'm here with Quivon, who does sales and marketing for Andersons. And uh, first of all, thank you very much for having some time for us today. Appreciate it. Well, thank you it. for coming out here. It's an amazing opportunity to showcase our stuff. Yeah. So tell us, first of all, a little bit about where we are up here now. So uh, right now we're up in our mezzanine, which is uh, which is kind of an event space that we have here at the at the brewery. Mm -hmm. So our plan would be to get people in from the community checking the place out. It's a small kind of beer hall style space and obviously as you can see you can see all, look at over the brewery and see our production line and uh, and you know just watch watch our brewers at work when when you're enjoying your beer. Awesome. So th this is great. I love the idea of open concept, being able to yep. see everything happening. Yep. Um, so that's great. You've got the giant Jenga here, of course. Oh yeah, we got some and Jenga. The, the cornholio is that the corn, what it's cornhole. I mean, depending Everyone on calls what, it something different. Every yeah, depending <laughs> on what part of North America you're from, that calls something different. But essentially, you get the beanbag into the into the hole. That's the objective of the game. Anyway, it's a fun a fun thing to do. Awesome. Yeah. So I know we were also chatting uh, just briefly about uh, how you guys kind of want to be an event space and mm -hmm. maybe have some bands in here and yep. some 
some other stuff. Maybe expand on that a little bit. Tell me about, uh, you know, where you got that idea from, because that's kind of new, like 10 years ago, really no breweries were even concerned with that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's we see ourselves as a, as a space that's going to hopefully engage the community, and we're not, we don't want to be brewers hiding behind doors, and, you know, like, we want, we want people to come in, find out, educate them about the brewing process. We want, we want people to know exactly what we're doing and what we're getting right. up to. Um, as uh, we may have told you already, we're, we're plant, we already started a running club, so that's right. on every Wednesday evening, uh, 6.30. And then on Thursday, we're going to have uh, some yoga sessions in here as well, so um, what better way than, you know, to, to work up a sweat and then enjoy a pint after it, right. whether, it's, whether it's running or yoga or come for both, you know, it's, <laughs> we have, if you manage, <clears throat> if you come for six times for the, uh, for the running club, you're going to get a running, you're going to earn your six pack, and you're yeah. going you're gonna, you're gonna to get your, uh, your, your t-shirt. Awesome. Um, so that's a fun idea. We're also hoping to, you know, run some food tastings. Uh, there's talk of maybe having a, a, you know, a small Oktoberfest style, uh, style like beer hall up here for a, for a couple of hours in, uh, in October sometime. Um, and yeah, just 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 an area that we can get people up. I mean, if we can showcase a couple of local bands, or you know, have a guy, you know, doing an acoustic acoustic session here mm -hmm. on a on an ev a week e evening or weekend, I mean, hopefully we'll get people in the door yeah. tasting our beer and knowing a bit about us. So we, uh, as you said, it's an open concept. We want to teach people what we're doing. We don't want to hide. Right. We, want to, we want to make sure that, 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 they, that they learn about the beer. And, and you know, it's a bit better. It's a, it's a, it gives you a bit of a, I don't know. Um, it gives you more feelings towards the beer if you actually can see it being made. Oh, uh, for you, sure. It's yeah. just, yeah, it's a, you're, you're pulling back, uh, you know, the curtain to take a look exactly. at the wizard behind Yeah, uh, exactly. There, like right? a, lot so. of, a lot of places, you know, I mean, you can go and do your brewery tour, but it's very much, you know, operational hours are closed or whatever. I mean, we're unlikely to be doing brewery tours while there's stuff that's going on down there, but come up here, we like the canning line when it's going. I mean, it is quite noisy, so you might not enjoy your beer as much. Right. But everything else, we can talk <laughs> you through stuff. We can make sure that you... Uh, you uh, you understand what's going on and what people are doing at any stage, and, yeah. and the good thing is they might at any stage be cooking up a new uh, new brew of something that's mm -hmm. that we've never had before. So you might get a sneak peek. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so g going back to the yoga, exactly how many downward facing dogs would you have to do to break even on the calories consumed from a beer? I think it's one. Just one. Yeah, I think Excellent. if you can manage one, then you're good. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I'm totally the, just the, kidding with the you. Yoga, the yoga guy will, will be able to give, give out that stuff, but I think it's more so just getting people involved. It is free. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not, we're not planning on charging people for yoga. We just want to get them to see the place. And I know there's lots of people out there that, you know, that, that they feel um, nervous or, you know, intimidated going to, like, a yoga studio. So we're just hoping to bring it, you know, make it a bit more casual, have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and hopefully we're going to, you know, make Oldies Village the, the hub it should be. Awesome. So I know you're originally from Ireland. That's the, yeah, that's uh, the accent. You've been here for a while now. Yeah. Tell me about some of the differences you see between, say, in Europe <laughs> and coming over here to Canada or even Ontario okay. in the craft beer scene. So, I mean, the craft beer scene, there is some really established breweries that obviously in Europe um, uh, that, that have been hundreds of years old. They're, they're mm -hmm. really established. They have their they have their one or two beers that they sell in their, um, in, from their brewery and they sell all over Europe. Right. Um, in Ireland especially, they obviously you've got Guinness and you've got some, some exports that come over here like Kilkenny and Smithix and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know if you have Murphy's and things like that, but there's, they're, they're typically like, you know, the heavier beers that come from Ireland, right. typically. Um, so, but there has been a craft movement, again, similarly to, to Ontario and Canada and North America, the craft beer movement has picked up, mm -hmm. mostly in the last, I would say, five years. So since I've actually been in Canada, they've decided to start making really good beer, like locally in Ireland. And there's there's some really good uh, breweries that are that are winning awards across the, the across the, the world, actually. That's great. Um, they are still setting up. So there's, I would say, six good ones, and then there's maybe a couple of really small ones that are starting up. But mm -hmm. in terms of the number of verses over here in Ontario. I mean, obviously, our numbers in terms of population is smaller as well, but we are known for beer. So, mm -hmm. um, moving forward, do you guys have plans currently to try to get into the LCBO and beer store eventually, or is that just so far away you're not too worried about it yet? Uh, that's in the plan. I mean, mm -hmm. it is a process that you have to start months before you want to get in there. So, right. uh, in terms of actually getting into the LCBO and the beer store and the grocery stores, everything has to go through the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, so right. you have to be approved by those before you can even get into other other uh, outlets. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're in, we're in the process of doing it, a lot of paperwork, 
a lot of uh, red tape to fill out, but it's it's a process we want to complete and we want to get done correctly and, and get in there as soon as possible. I mean, hopefully you've been doing lots of exercising and stretching. You got to get ready to jump through some hoops, right? So. Oh, there's there's hoops to jump through, but I mean, it's it's it's, it's worth it. It's end. worth it in the end, from yeah. what I gather. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, and there's lots of breweries out there. So like, I mean, they want to ensure that the qual the, their beer that they're they're selling is quality, they, right? Which makes sense. I mean, we want to. We want to have the same option that we don't want to. We don't want to ever want to put out a bad keg. They don't want to ever put out a bad beer and, and get a bad name for it. So, we it is an understandable process that we have to go through, and obviously it's something that we, we we're, we're working on right now. And our hope is that we'll be in the in there when time for one of our seasonals in winter, probably mm -hmm. the winter ale. But right now it's fingers and toes crossed for that. All right, so I'm here with Pete, who's one of the brewers here at Anderson's, and he's just going to take us through the brewing process a little. Um, so this is basically where the magic starts, am I right? Yeah, essentially. So in order to, to convert that starch and those grains to sugars, we need to crack the grains open. So right. we do that by throwing all our grains through this roller mill uh, mm -hmm. right here. So the roller mill will, it'll, it'll run through, the grain will run through, it'll right. get busted open. Um, not too fine. We don't want to make it like a, a floury powder or else right. we're going to have a hard time brewing. We just want it cracked open just enough that we can expose the insides to the, to the water. Awesome. So anyway, um, yeah, sorry. Um, when we uh, run it through the mill, then right. uh, it gets transported through this, uh, this somewhat vertical auger behind you into right. this hopper here. Once we have our entire recipe milled, uh, we then move it from the hopper through this white flex auger here mm -hmm. over to the brew house. Cool. Yeah. So this obviously, I mean, basically what the long and short of the story is that this is saving you a lot of time and energy physically yeah. carrying grain and having to walk up a ladder Definitely. of steps. And Definitely. Yeah. There's still a little bit of manual labor in the sense that we have to put the bags up on top of here and dump them in. But right. yeah, it's, it's a lot better than... Uh, then lugging them up. Right, and the especially top. on a brew day when that's your kettle's hot up there, yeah, you're gonna be... It definitely gets pretty toasty, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Awesome, so we got to see now how all the malt actually gets there. Uh, can you tell us where it's going? Yeah, so we'll head over to the mash tun next. That's, uh, that's where the grain's going. Sounds good, let's go check it out. Cool. Great, so now we're up here where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. uh, this is probably the most crucial step in making the beer, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, this is where everything really gets solidified for later on when the, I'd say the true magic happens when that yeast makes that alcohol. Right, yeah, yeah. No, you don't want to forget about that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, as you saw before, um, the grain, mm -hmm. it'll get transported through this flex auger up here into the mash tun, and then this is where that uh, starch to sugar conversion actually happens. Right. So we, uh, we mix the grain with our, our water here, Mm -hmm. um, and that creates a liquid called wort. Um, so we, we, that, and that's the, the result of that conversion. So it usually takes about an hour. It sometimes depends on what you're brewing, like some recipes will be different, but right. typically recipes are about an hour long for conversion. And Excellent. Yeah. So is this pretty much like the average size that maybe a new microbrew in Ontario might start with, or is this a little, it seems to be really a big space in here that you guys yeah. have, so you could expand eventually if you needed to. Yeah, definitely. We, uh, we do have um, a, f a fair amount of space, which is really good, um, and especially vertical space. We can wow. definitely go yeah. up, um, which is definitely in our favor. Um, the, as far as the brew house size goes, uh, it is a fairly average size, mm -hmm. um, they're probably on the bigger size of a, of a startup, but right. uh, decent size, definitely. Good, and bigger is better because, to, for in a sense, because that allows you to basically get more beer brewed in one day. For sure, and with our brew house, it's two brews on the brew house to one fermenter. Right. So it's a 15 barrel brew house, 30 barrel fermenters. So right. Two to one, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. And did you want to tell us about this tank over here yeah, as so well? Like to maybe your switch right, your spots? Yeah, to your right is the, uh, the kettle. So right. uh, after the, the conversion is done and we do a couple other processes, then um, we begin the process of laudering where we're trying to separate the liquid, the wort, mm -hmm. um, from the grain. Right. Uh, and throughout that process, we're, we're pulling the liquid from that grain and we're putting it into this vessel and we're going for our a certain volume and, and more importantly a certain gravity point, uh, right. meaning like the sugar in the, you know, of the wort uh, in this vessel and then we know we're going to start boiling. Awesome, great. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's move on to the next step. 
Sure. Awesome. So we've came over here now to the fermentation vessels. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just tell us a little bit about them and how they work. Okay, so after the boil's done, we've added our hops in the boil. Mm -hmm. uh, we've cooled the wort down with our heat exchanger. At that point, then we ship all that wort over here and we uh, we have the yeast already in the fermenters here and uh oh before you add the word yeah we we, we do um we just we just add the the yeast to the cones so that right. when the work gets in there it's just it's already there and it's good to go uh, is that a little bit different than how some breweries do i know as a home brewer i always add the um, yeast basically after yeah, i've got it uh sorry yeah it is a little bit different um from what i've been used to right. um but it, it 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 doesn't really change things too much um as long as the yeast is in there with the work, I mean, that's what we're really worried about. So, right. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's worked out pretty good. So, yeah. Um, from there, I mean, fermentation begins. Um, usually within the next day, we can start to see signs of fermentation. We'll mm -hmm. see uh, our blow off tube, uh, like one over there, start to bubble up a little. To bubble away. That means we know that the yeast is doing its job. It's converting that, uh, that sugar into mm -hmm. alcohol and uh, also one of the byproducts of CO2. That's what that bubbling is. Right. Um, How long on average maybe would they be in here? Just uh, ales, ales like your your very quickest turnaround from grain to glass would be about two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, typically, I mean, yeah, so around around if not just over two weeks. Depends what you're doing. If you're dry hopping, it might take a little bit of extra time. Right. Um, loggers take even longer than that. Mm -hmm. um, so really, it depends on what you're brewing. But the the, the shortest amount of time about two weeks. Yeah. Awesome, and I know we were just uh, briefly speaking about this um, beforehand, but yeah. you've actually been homebrewing for a while, and you actually have uh, gone to the Niagara Brewers College yeah. as well. Yeah, so I, I do have uh, some experience homebrewing. Um, I started off. What kind of got me into brewing um, was doing a bit of homebrewing with some with a friend, yeah. and uh, that's how it all starts. Yeah, absolutely. And then it just kind of took hold, and then I found the Niagara College program and really went after it luckily got in good for you and then yeah it was a great experience taught me a lot um met some really amazing people mm -hmm. and uh it's great to be part of this industry awesome i know uh i had the opportunity with the london home brewers guild to actually get to go uh, and visit the niagara brewers college there and it's really hands-on i mean you guys are brewing beer like every week almost and you're doing every step of the process yourself which is great because a lot of times when you go to school, like I went to Fanshawe for marketing and it's mm. it's all just books, really mm. books. And you know, there's some hands-on in certain courses, but certainly with the beer, you guys were probably brewing almost as much as you were in class. Uh, I wish that were true. <laughs> <laughs> um, we definitely had uh, a fair amount of theory. Um, right. There was quite a bit of theory, but we were fortunate enough to get into the brewery and get hands-on and technical at least once every two weeks. That's great. Um, which was awesome. I mean, as true with a lot of places, you run out of space really quick. And that's mm -hmm. when you have, our class was uh, 24 people. Right. We only had so many fermenters. It gets pretty full pretty quick. And then, you, of course, you have to wait at least two weeks. Two weeks. Depending on what you're making. To... So, yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't um, an everyday kind of thing. Right. But we, we, we did our fair share. I'm sure you did some research each day oh, in college. Absolutely. It's important. Research and development <laughs> is right. key. Yeah. But to speak to what you're talking about with homebrewing, that's where a lot of the supplemental education came from. We mm -hmm. would uh, get together and we would homebrew sometimes in well, the you middle of February in, in a garage somewhere. And awesome. Freeze. Yeah, just be freezing. But it's still good. Yeah, while well, we're in college because right. homebrewing... Homebrewing is really important uh, for this industry, I think. Um, you really learn a lot by, by homebrewing. Right. And, and it gives you so much more freedom. Because with, with brewing, I mean, it, it, it's, it's easy to get into, mm -hmm. but it can, be, it can be endlessly complicated. Right. Um, it's, it's one of those things, it's, you could say it's easy to pick up, hard to master. It right. definitely is. Like, I'll, you know, who, who knows how long I'll be in this industry. I'll never know everything. No right. one ever will. Right. Um, there will always be something else, some new innovation, some new way of doing something. And uh, that's awesome. It's awesome to be in an industry like that. That's always growing and always changing. Yeah, and that's nice that it's, you, you're never going to get stifled or bored. Um, I know I have heard that from some people who have yeah. brewed with macros before. Yeah. You're kind of brewing the same beer every day for 20 years. For it sure. It kind of becomes, you know, fairly, it's, it's really easy to become complacent. Definitely. 
and just, you know, you kind of have that norm that you set. And here, you know, a lot of craft breweries, they specialize in doing seasonals. So, yeah, you mm -hmm. might have your four or five core brands yeah. that you can just perfect, but then you also get to experiment a little. Do you guys have a smaller pilot system here? We do, actually. Awesome. Yeah, so we have a little one barrel system, yeah. um, and that gives us kind of endless freedom. Right. And, and again, to speak to, to home brewing, what you were talking about, you know, getting bored with doing the same core brands, just being able to home brew, just gives you that outlet that creative outlet right and and through here with our smaller system we'll mm -hmm. eventually be able to you know if we brew something up on the smaller scale that we really like we can throw it on a tap and if it takes on then we can right upscale it all right so i'm here uh at the massive can mountain yeah for sure it's uh it's quite the site unfortunately not yet they're not yet full but uh they're what? they're waiting i know i can't take these home no, unfortunately. Well, you can, but there's going to be nothing in there for you. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, I can see the amber. You have the amber here and then the IPA. Those are the yeah. two main that you're going to be canning for yeah. now? Yeah, for now. And then we're also planning on uh, canning some of the seasonals as well. Um, just kind of whenever they come about. Because we want to, cans are a very popular way of, of taking beer home. So. I've noticed that in the Ontario craft um, beer industry just in the last year or two cans have been getting more popular which Definitely. is strange to me because I honestly prefer to have it from draft if possible oh for sure um, but uh, you know and, and even bottles seem to be kind of on the out a little bit and cans are coming around why do you yeah. think that is it like what's causing this popularity in cans to happen um, I would say it's it's from a, from a consumer standpoint mm -hmm. I would say it's easier to to carry cans they're lighter they don't clank around. Right, they're um, not gonna break. Exactly, they're not gonna break. Much more portable. Exactly, and that, that's a big one. Um, from a brewing standpoint, um, you're not worried about any sorts of light getting in, because right. it's a sealed vessel, and also, you know, they're, they're usually pretty sealed, or they're, they're sealed pretty well, so right. you don't have to worry about air getting in. So, right. um, it makes it a very good container for, for beer. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. All right. You don't mind if I just pull this uh, one out here, do you? Don't, don't touch that. Oh, okay. That. We can hook you up up front there. All right. Yeah, I don't want that whole thing to fall <laughs> over. That'd be tragic. I'll, I'll save that for Jenga. Yeah, too. for sure, for sure. <laughs> wow, Bert, that looked amazing. I wish we could have been there. Um, despite them being so new, it's great to see that they have so much room to expand. Oh, and if they keep making beers that good, they're going to have to expand. Absolutely. Do you have a particular favorite that you had in Anderson there that sticks out in your mind? Definitely the IPA from Anderson's. Um, it's you know it's got a little maltiness to it, which you like, but it's also very complex hop flavors. Uh, as you saw, I even asked him which hops were involved, and he told me about a couple, but he wanted to keep a, a few to himself, which is fair enough. He's worked on that recipe for a long time, right? So, anyways, that's for all for tonight's episode. Thanks again to Miloshes. Until next time, cheers, boys. Cheers.